playing that please if you have a need today I'm going to ask you to step out your seat come to this altar right now I just believe by that act of faith brother I lay hands on you or anybody else touches you I believe by that act of faith the Lord will heal you right now right now right now right now in Jesus name in Jesus name you need deliverance you need a touch. You need divine intervention. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, rest on us. Rest on us, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let your healing virtue flow through our bodies. Quicken and anoint by your spirit, Lord. Quicken and anoint by your spirit, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Sing out again. Oh, that's the need. That's the desperate need of every human being. You are my king. Sing it again and mean it. Oh, I yield my heart. Oh, I yield my heart to you. You are my king. I yield my heart to you. I yield my heart to you. I yield my heart. To you, you're my king. Oh, we love you, Jesus. I my heart. my heart. my heart. my heart. my heart. my heart. all in subjection to you, Jesus. One with you. Nothing in this world could ever keep me from you. I am one with you. Nothing in this world could ever keep me from you. I am one with you. Nothing in this world could ever change me from you. I yield my heart to you. I yield my heart to you. I yield my heart to you. You're my king. I 
Just how to be one with you. Oh, yeah, Lord. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. To be one with you. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Teach us how to be one with you, holy in my heart to you. I yield my heart to you. I yield my heart to you. You're my king. Give my all to you. Yield my all to you. I yield my all to you. You're my king. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just stretch your hand this way right now as an act of faith. Father, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for those watching online right now that you would touch them powerfully by the Holy Spirit right where they sit. You would quicken them. You would anoint and let that anointing break and destroy every yoke in their life. Thank you today that you and you alone have all power in heaven and in earth. It's given to you of the Father. And I thank you today. I thank you today. Lord, I thank you for that dunamis. I thank you today for that zuzia, that authority, power. Thank you, Lord. All splendor, all dominion, all might resides in your great name. We believe it. We thank you for it today. We receive it, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Simeon, Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, we do, Jesus. You're my Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. 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 Come, Holy Spirit, I need thee. Come, sweet spirit, I pray. Come in your strength and your power. Come in your own gentle way. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Thank you, Jesus. Praise your holy name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is not the message, but I want you to I want you to lend me your best ear. Because this is this is the hour of where we're at. This world is filled with voices. There's so many things and so many people and so many entities vying for your attention. And you've got to be careful that you don't let those voices drown out the voice. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? There's so many. And I'm going to tell you something. You step out to do something for God and you're going to hear all kinds of voices. You're inadequate. You're not good enough. You don't have what it takes. Why don't you just quit? You're a failure. You're this, you're that, you're that. That's called the accuser of the brethren who stands before God day and night to accuse you. That's what he does. So, you know, don't think that, you know, if I just withdraw from the battle, that's going to fix the problem. No, it's not. He's going to continue to try to browbeat you all the way to hell. What you've got to do is stand up and say, I am, I am the child of God. I am, I am a child of the King. I've been destined for victory. I've been destined for greatness. I have purpose. Let me tell you, so I started to say something and the Holy Spirit just checked me. I started to say God doesn't respond to whining. Actually, he does. He sent fiery serpents. Hello? Uh-oh. Actually, he does. He sent fiery serpents and they begin to bite the people. You know, we got to be careful. And I do believe this. I want you to hear this. There's, there's a fine line between we share our burdens, we bear one another's burdens so we can pray. There's nothing wrong with that. But there comes a place where when it gets beyond that, now we've, we've crossed over into the murmuring and complaining, which doesn't fix the situation. It makes it worse. And guess what is the opposite of all that? Worship and praise. That's why it's so important that we do it. It's why it's so important that we put something else in our mouth. David said, I fill my mouth the praises of God. It's, it, it, we, our mouth has to, we have to learn to taste words like we taste food in the natural. We've got to taste words in the spiritual. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Hallelujah. He's worthy. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our adoration. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. And, and you know, if, if we're not careful, we get into this thing where we're trying to top someone else's tail. You know, my grandma fell down one flight of steps. Well, my grandma fell down three. Well, my grandma fell off the Empire State Building. There's no end to it about trying to top who's got the worst problem. But can I tell you, compared to the 95% of the world today, whatever problem you walked in here today is laughable compared to what the rest of the world is going through. Fighting for their next meal, running for their life, hiding out in the woods because of persecution. Wherever it is around the world today, we are blessed. We are the blessed of God. We are blessed of the Most High God. And we need to remind ourselves of that. Listen, you, if, you, if you're going to be honest, if you're going to be honest today, you're going to have to spend your entire life fighting against stinking thinking because it's all around you and it's so easy to fall into. And we've got to press through that. We've got to persevere beyond that. Because that's where the glory resides. That's where the blessing resides. That's where the victory comes. It doesn't come in our murmuring and complaining. It comes in lifting our eyes to the hills from whence comes our help. Our help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. Our help comes from Him. Our sustenance and our, our alone strength. My shield and my buckler. The lifter up of my head. So I will declare unto the Lord today, He is great. And His mercy endures forever. I will praise Him. I will praise Him on the cymbals. I will praise Him with the high sounding instruments. I will praise Him. I will 
praise Him. I will praise Him. I will praise Him because He alone is worthy. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's not just hype. That's not just words. It's reality. Isn't it amazing how if that's just words, then what is all that other mess you're saying that's dragging you down in the hole? That's just words too. So we're going to have to speak the life-giving, life-changing, dynamic, transformative power of God over our lives and over our situation. And when we do, we're going to see a difference. We're going to see a shifting in the heavenlies. Folks, it's coming. I've been feeling it on the Friday night prayer meetings we've been at. There's a shifting in the heavenlies. Why do you think, why do you think the enemy increased his attack? Why do you think he doubled down on what he... Because he knows there's a breakthrough. He knows there's a breakthrough he can't stop. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Come on, just lift your hands with me all over this building. Don't have anything to do with denomination. It's because he's worthy. Come on, with your mouth, just say, Jesus, you're worthy. Jesus, you're worthy. Jesus, you are worthy. You are worthy. In spite of it all, you're worthy. In spite of what I've been through this past week, you're worthy. In spite of what I've been through in my entire life, you're worthy. It's the goodness of the Lord we haven't been consumed. It's the goodness of God that's brought us through. It's the goodness of God that carried us through. Who bore our sicknesses and carried our burdens. Sustained us. Lifted us up. Made a way when there was no way. I'm telling you, he's worthy today. Oh, you're worthy, Jesus. Oh, you're so worthy, Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Oh, we bless you, Lord. Oh, we worship you. Oh, we worship you. Oh, yes, we do. Do you feel the world is broken? Do you feel the shadows deepen? We do. But do you know that all the dark won't stop the light from getting through? that you could see it all made new. We do. Is all creation groaning? Yeah. Is a new creation coming? Yeah. Is the glory of the Lord to be the light within our midst. Yeah. Is it good that we remind ourselves of this? Yeah. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone home? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The light of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the land who died to ransom the slave. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? Does the Father truly love us? Does the Spirit move among us? And 
Jesus, Jesus, a Messiah, hope forever, Lord, as he loves. Does our God intend to dwell again with us? Is anyone worthy? Is anyone home? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The light of Judah, who conquered the grave, he is David's root and the land of God to ransom the slave from every people and tribe. Every nation and tongue, he has split us a kingdom and priests to reign with the Son. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy? Let's just sing that verse again. Does the Father truly love us? He does. Does the Spirit move among us? He does. And does Jesus, our Messiah, hold forever those He loves? He does. God intend to dwell again with us. Come on, the dead church. Hallelujah. Is anyone worthy? Is anyone home? Is anyone able to break the seal and open the scroll? The light of Judah who conquered the he is David's root and the land of God to ransom the slave for every people and tribe, every nation and tongue. He is made as a king of a priest, slay the son. Is he worthy? Is he worthy? Yes, he is. Thank you, Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Brother John, I don't think that one's on the devil's playlist. I doubt he's got that in his loop. Woo. Thank you, Lord. God bless you. You may be seated. Praise God. Thank you, praise team. Wow. Hallelujah. Who is able to break the seal and open the scroll? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is. He is. He is. He is. He is. Thank you, Jesus. He's an awesome God. Praise the Lord. I have never preached a message exactly like this in what will soon be 42 years of preaching. And uh, while I don't feel it's offensive necessarily in its content let me just remind everyone we're on a 30-day moratorium of getting offended amen and uh, Jesus said blessed are ye that are not offended in me and uh, as I preached last Sunday we're living in the age of offense it seems like everybody's looking for something to be offended by 
And that spirit is pervading all of our culture, and it has to be resisted. Amen? It has to be resisted because you're not immune, you're not immune to that. You know, if, if Peter could be in the presence of Jesus and make a satanically inspired statement, come on now. If Jesus was standing right before him, he was in his presence, and Peter could come across with a satanically inspired statement, the enemy will and can use your lips if you don't keep your guard up. Can I get a witness? Keep your guard up. Keep your guard up. Death and life is in the power of, t of the tongue. You know, you're, you're, going, to, you're going to reap or, or, or re receive the harvest of the fruit of your lips. And so, you know, I, I've, I've got to constantly remind myself because there's an enemy. And I will tell you something. The devil never tells you anything good. He never tells you anything complimentary. Are you hearing me? The devil did not read the book, How to Win Friends and Influence People to Try to Bless You With. You know, he, he, he does come as an angel of light. If you're doing the wrong things, there's times he'll try to make you feel that's okay. But you should have enough discernment to know the difference. Amen? But today I want to talk about the need for reason. And uh, this message just kind of got birthed in my spirit last night as I was talking to a pastor, a friend of mine on the phone. And I, as we were talking, I, I, I said something and it just quickened. It just quickened the whole sermon thought. How many of you have ever just been talking to somebody and all of a sudden, boom, you're just like, I mean, maybe that's just exclusive or more so towards preachers than others. But, you know, when, when you're, when your mind is constantly, you're reaching out, Lord, what, what is it you want me to, to, to say? Because I do believe this. I, I don't think this world, I want you to hear me, I don't think this world needs any more preachers that are getting their sermons from some denominational headquarter off of the Internet and downloading it and slapping it in their computer and coming to church and hoping somehow that it'll bless someone. I believe that we need to hear from God. I believe we need to try our best to have a fresh word from the Lord. And while I will say this, there are sermons and there are messages. And the difference, I believe, is this. A message is when it burns in you and you know it's from the throne of God. It's a right now word or it's a rhema word if you, if you like Greek words and you like Hebrew and all of that. And there's nothing wrong with that. I do believe, however, because the Word of God is what it is, you can preach a message or a sermon, I should say, that contains the Word of God and folks will be blessed even though it may not classify as a message. But I want you to know this. I am trying my best to get messages, not sermons. Okay? But there's nothing wrong with a sermon if it contains the Word of God. Because there's something within that Word that has the power to break the chains of hell and to set you free in every situation or circumstance. So I would just tell you that I think this one falls closer to the message end of the spectrum than it does the sermon end. But I do believe this. This is a desperate need in the hour we're living. And so if you have your Bibles, if you'll turn please to the book of Isaiah, as we talk about the need for reason, just so you can wrap your mind around what we're talking about today, not to insult your intelligence, but many times I'll go to the dictionary and look up words that I'm sure I know the meaning to, but simply because I want to not only confirm it, but expand on it, and there's many times that I'll like get a revelation. I'll like, well, wow, I didn't realize it also meant that. And so reason means a statement offered in explanation or justification, ground, cause, or the power to think. 
So when Peter says that we are to be ready always to give a reason, an answer, a reason for the faith that's within us, we need to have grounds, justification, and cause. We don't live our life by happenstance, circumstance, and chance. We live our life led and directed by the Spirit of God. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I don't want to live my life in a total reactionary mode. I want to live my life in a proactionary mode. Mode. I don't want to constantly be reacting to what life has thrown at me. I want to be in the driver's seat, and that can only happen with God leading me. Hello? And I don't mean driver's seat, and I'm controlling everything, but in that the devil is not setting the agenda. Can we just be honest? There's many days on this planet that things will begin to spin out of control in your sphere or your circle of things, and you find yourself all day long reacting to things instead of acting to what you had intended on doing. How many know that can happen? It's been said, you know, anyone in small business or anyone in the business world who works for themselves, it's been said many times, you don't run the business, the business runs you. Well, you know, there's a lot of truth to that. You can't ignore your customers. That's why you exist. So if someone has a breakdown or something goes wrong, obviously that gets put into your day when that wasn't on the agenda. But when it comes to our family unit, how many times is the enemy using a circumstance or a situation brought on by that circumstance or situation that ends up swallowing up and involving the whole family in something no one expected to deal with. Amen? All right, so I'm going to ask you to lend me your best ear and receive the Word of God today because I believe this is a, a, a desperate, desperate word for this nation. I really do. Isaiah 1 and verse 16 says, Wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Here's the verse I want you to really focus in on. Come now and let us reason Together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. If you be willing and obedient. Let me say that again. If you be willing and obedient. How many willing and obedient people do we have today? Hello? I, I hope you can like, I that's me, Pastor. That's a duh. That's why I'm here. If you be willing and obedient. If you be willing and obedient, let me say it one more time. If you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. How many would like to eat the good of the land? I think there's more people that want to eat the good of the land than there is that want to be willing and obedient. I'm just saying. When I look around me, and that's the problem with the way some people read the Bible. They like to skip to the blessing and ignore the requirement. Uh-oh. I said they like to skip over the requirement and go straight to the blessing. Well, I'll say it right. Yeah, you, you understand what I'm saying? You, you can't do that. Life is filled with cause and effect. Life is filled with consequences that are unleashed. Life is filled with things that are set in motion by what we do and what we say. But if you refuse and rebel, you shall be devoured with the sword, for the mouth of the Lord have spoken it. Wow. I believe one of the greatest challenges of this age is the breakdown of reason. So many seem to have no justifiable reason for what they do or what they say. And if you 
I don't like to use the word confront, but if you challenge or if you even as much as ask a question for why they did what they did or said what they said, their immediate response is to fly into a rage. Whenever a person flies into a rage, when you ask them why they've done what they've done, it means they have no justification. They have no reason for their behavior. Listen, if you can't explain it to your wife, you probably can't explain it to God. I, I, let me try that one again. If you can't explain it to your husband, you probably can't explain it to God. If you can't explain it to your kids, you probably can't explain it to God. If what you're doing cannot be explained, you probably shouldn't be doing it. If it can't be justified, if it can't be reasoned out, if you can't say, this is the reason why I'm proceeding in this direction, then you need to leave it alone. We're living in a day where there's a breakdown of reason. It seems many have no ability to realize every choice comes with circumstances. Now here's where we're going to swerve right in the middle of it. So I hope you'll just fasten your seatbelts if you're... If you're watching via podcast, don't, don't, don't tune me off. Turn me out because it, it needs to be said. The epidemic of drug and alcohol and substance abuse impairs people's ability to think correctly or to reason correctly. More and more states are legalizing the use of marijuana as a harmless recreational drug, and they don't tell you the truth. The side effects are... Anger and paranoia. Fits of anger destroys relationships. Paranoia destroys relationships. When you think everything and everybody is after you, when everybody around you is spying on you, when you're in a room of four people and three of them got to be talking about you. you listen. If you want an understanding of how to, how to explain the way some people are living their life, it's because they smoked too much wacky backy years ago. They've hit up too many reefers. They've, 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 they've popped too many pills. They've done stuff. And, and it's serious. And when you try to help them, and you, suddenly you realize there's a breakdown of reason, this is dangerous. Because it's the Holy Spirit through the means of conviction that leads you to Christ and leads you to repentance. And if you no longer have the ability to reason, the Holy Spirit doesn't have the tools wherewith to convict you of and convince you of your wrong. Let me try to say it another way. Suppose everybody woke up tomorrow and thought it was okay to steal and kill. It's not just what you think about something. It's not just what your opinion is. It's not just, well, I have my truth and you have your truth. No, there's an absolute moral clarity that has to govern the universe or we're all subject to destruction. There has to be a universal truth that stealing is wrong. Not a justification. Well, if they'd have wanted it, they wouldn't have left it lay on the table. Oh, there's people of that kind of... I'm serious. Well, they have more than I do, so they won't miss it anyway. And besides that, it was probably insured, so the insurance will take care of it. It is this kind of justification and reasoning that destroys a society. We have an epidemic of drug abuse in America. Fentanyl is pouring across our border. One of the strongholds of opioid addictions right now is in the state of Massachusetts, far, far from the border, but they're, they're, they're establishing a stronghold in the Northeast. We cannot continue to survive as a society if no one anymore can be reasoned with. We have to remain reasonable. 
My daddy prayed for years. If I heard him pray it once, I heard him pray it a hundred times. It didn't matter what the, the family devotions was on. It didn't matter what chapter out of the Bible he read. When it came time to pray and he closed the book, I can remember sitting in the living room of the house I grew up in, and these are the words he would pray somewhere in that prayer. God deliver us from wicked and unreasonable men. I don't know if I'm becoming my daddy or just catching up with what my daddy was on to, but I'm starting to pray that same prayer. God deliver me from unreasonable people. God help us. Deliver us. What happens when a whole society just decides to use a mind-altering substance? Just purely recreational. Oh, it's just to relieve me of stress. And then you're left with this paranoia and these fits of rage and anger that destroy everybody around you. You lose your ability to have social skills. And so you can't work with the public. So you declare yourself a disability. And that's not against those that have legitimate disabilities. I'm just telling you, the whole society can't sit around and dream up a reason why we can't work no more. Are you, are you with, hello, look, 30 day moratorium, do not be offended. Getting angry just proves my point because I'm trying to reason with you. Come let us reason together, says the Lord. Wow. You know, part of our training our children is not just to let them do whatever they want to do. You have to reason with them and you need to tell them this is why we don't do this and this and this. This is why, you know, when you're out in public and you tell them, you got to hold on to mommy's hand or you got to hold on to daddy's hand. The reason is you can get lost in public and there's people that intend you harm. So you must stay here. You must hold on to my hand. When we cross the street, you must hold on to my hand. If you rip my, your hand out of my hand and run out in traffic, you could be hit by a car and be killed. I got news for you. Every, every rule God has, every law God has is for our benefit. God is not a killjoy sitting in the heavens just trying to see if you like exceeded some rule or, or, or missed some limit. God is not the police hiding in the bushes running radar. He loves you. He's not willing that any should perish. He has established laws and principles on this planet that you might prosper. And life does not work without them. So what happens if you lose your ability to reason? How does God work with you? How does the Holy Spirit convict you or convince you of sin if you've lost the mental capacity to understand right and wrong? I looked up the Greek word for reprobate. There's only one Greek word. And one of the main definitions is void of judgment. But it also is that which is abominable or, or totally, totally offensive to God. But, you know, I, I, look, we don't have like reprobate light. You know, it's not like beer, which I can't stand. It's not like, you know, this beer light and this regular beer. A reprobate mind is a mind that can no longer grasp the truth in order to make a proper decision. How do I guard against that in an age where reason and moral clarity and moral absolutes are being done away with and anyone who dares bring them to the public square is ridiculed? and drummed off the stage or shouted down. Let me tell you something. Let, let me just throw this out to you today. If you think you have the truth, if you think you have the right answer, then why do you have to jump up and scream and shut other people down that are talking? If your argument was any good, you could listen quietly to the other person and then refute everything they said. But you can't because you've lost your ability to reason, so all you have left is rage. 
We don't have free speech on many colleges, campuses anymore. If anyone comes with an alternate view of what the college stands for, they just get all the kids together to scream and yell and drum them off the campus and, and, and the, the, the assembly or whatever is broken up and, 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 and security has to be called. All because you did the terrible offensive thing of suggesting something to those young minds that they have not accepted or been introduced to. Wow. You know, it's a bad day in any type of argument when you just tell the other person, I don't want to hear it. Talk to the hand. You know, if they've really got the truth, then you need it. And if they don't have the truth, and you do, they really need it. I'm not saying this message will make you run around the church, shout, and jump up and down, but it might get a handle on what you're dealing with. And it may help you to say no to some things that otherwise could destroy you. And maybe while some people still have something to work with, you can tell them that really is not recreational, that really is not harmless, that really is not just something that you're deciding to do for a little pleasure. It's doing something to you that's going to change the way you are for eternity. And the Bible says in Psalms 11:3, if the righteous be destroyed, what if the foundations, excuse me, be destroyed, what can the righteous do? What are those foundations? The very foundations are the building blocks of society that make everything work. The basic rules of the Ten Commandments. Listen, I'm, I want to say it again. I, you, you need to hear this and listen, listen with your best ear so there's no reason to be offended. We do not live in the greatest country on earth because we are the greatest people on earth. We live in one of the, if not the greatest country on earth, because the ideals and the principles by which we were founded are the greatest principles and ideals on earth. You need to understand that. You don't come here and automatically become great. You don't come here and automatically just whatever. You may, you may for a while thrive off of the blessing of someone else. But if you don't adopt the principles, if you don't adopt the beliefs, if you don't adopt what made this country desirable to live in, you will sink down in the same mess from whichever, wherever you came from because it's not the geographical difference of location that's going to change you. It's the transformation of your heart that's going to make the difference. I can take a murderer to the Bahamas and he'll still be a murderer. Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? I can take the addicted to another place and they're still addicted. My Problems are not automatically solved by changing location. They're solved by changing my heart. And there's only one that can change my heart. But my heart cannot be changed if I'm not willing to listen to reason. We got too many people saying, well, I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, you're blind. That, that's the problem. You're, 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 you're spiritually, logically blind. So you don't see. That's why the greatest hymn of all, the, the national anthem of the church, if you please, Amazing Grace, it says, I once was blind, but now I see. See, that's what happens when you're transformed by the gospel. Your eyes are finally open to the truth. If there's a revelation that happens. There's an aha moment. Now it makes sense. Now it begins to make a difference. And you know, here's the thing about it. If you try to convince someone against their will, they remain unconvinced still. It's like the little boy that was set to the corner for being bad and, and rude to his mother and being rebellious. And she told him to go sit in the corner and so he took his little 
stool and he went and sat in the corner and she passed by to see how he was doing and she heard him say, I may be sitting down on the inside, but I'm standing up on the outside. I, I, I mean, I may be sitting down on the outside rather, but I'm standing up on the inside. I'm trying to hurry and I'm saying my sentence there backward for a moment. How many know that's the truth? Somebody can just pretend to go along with you for the moment, but if their heart isn't changed, that's why we don't believe in coercive conversion. That's why conversion at the threat of a gun or the conversion at the threat of, 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 of the penalty of death is nonsense. Because if what you have is really worth having, you don't need to threaten somebody with it. You need to say, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. My Jesus is good. My God is good. And He wants to do you good. But you've got to be willing to reason. Foundations make everything else work. How many understand that? Without them, nothing works. This generation's playing Russian roulette with their soul. God help us. Because we've got a world filled with psychotic, mind-altering drugs. Be careful. Let's not play games with our soul. Can, 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 can I just say it again? Let's not play games with our soul. Wow. I'm going to tell you, that all like just literally scared the jabbers out of you to ever put anything inside of you that you have no idea of the contents. You have no idea of the manufacture. You have no idea of the... They say some of these drugs are so, so potent that one dose and you're hooked for life. One dose and you're never the same again. Look, I, I know... I know I'm speaking to people today, and, and, and I mean, look, it may even be painful. You said, Pastor, you know, you're, you're preaching to the choir. There's people in my own family that are like this. Look, I get that. But can you just understand, if I'm going to be faithful to the truth, every Sunday something I preach is going to hit somebody. That's why we just can't turn ourselves into these generic mamby-pamby, just don't say anything, you know, get your little pablum from headquarters and spew it out so nobody's offended, nobody's hurt. But guess what? Nobody's helped. Nobody's helped. So what we have to pray for is for some moments of clarity. We have to cry out to God for mercy, a revival of reason. Can I get a witness? We need to go to some of our loved ones and say, look, this is what you're doing. This is what you're dealing with. Do you understand? I'll never forget as long as I live being asked to go to Charlottesville to the fifth floor of a certain hospital in that area. I mean, this has been literally, this has been literally before I was officially probably in the ministry, when I was still like a youth leader here at this church. We're talking about 40 plus years ago. There was a brother that came to this church and he said, I have a nephew. He's in Charlottesville. Would you please go see him? I said, I will. I got off the fifth floor of this hospital unit and the fifth floor was reserved for the mental incapacitated that's the best way i know how to say it the, the mentally ill i'll be honest with you when 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 the elevator doors opened and listen 40 40 years ago nobody had even heard the word alzheimer's you, you heard senility you heard hardening of the arteries but the alzheimer's it wasn't, as far as I know, even in the vocabulary then. But I really just expected, I expected, I want you to hear this, I expected when those elevator doors opened and I started down the hall, I expected the pre-mental picture. How many ever do a pre-mental picture before you go somewhere? You, you, you try to like prepare yourself and you, 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 you go through something you pre-mentally suppose or assume how it's going to be. I thought I'd see a bunch of old folks shuffling down the hall. You know, maybe if they're a walker, totally out of their mind because they just live so long. That floor was filled with a majority of young people that had burned their mind out on drugs. I sat down with this young man. As my memory 
serves me. He had, he had been involved with PCB, PCP, excuse me, which was an animal tranquilizer. I tried my best to break down the gospel message as simply as I possibly could. Every word as simple as I knew how to, to say. I could not reach square one. There was nothing left to reason with. I tried my best to communicate. It went nowhere. I walked away with a heavy feeling in my heart, got on that elevator. I'm just like, what are we doing? That was 40 years ago. How much worse is it now? How many, I don't even believe I would be exaggerated if I said, how many hundreds of times is it worse now? Thousands would probably be more accurately. What are we doing? Listen, I know none of us like confrontation. After a while, if you've got any sense at all, everybody just wants peace. You want peace in your family. You want peace in your marriage. You want peace with your co-workers. You just want peace. If you don't, there's you're, you're, something wrong with you. But while there's still the ability for your loved one to at least reason, plead with them, reason with them, talk with them, Un let, make them understand that they're one dose away. They're one hit away. They're one this away from totally destroying their soul for all eternity. I don't think it's time for nice platitudes. If your house is on fire, you don't run around talking like, I smell a little smoke, honey. Uh, maybe you should stop playing that game and maybe we should stroll out into the yard. How many know you have to sound an alarm? Come, let us reason together. 1 Timothy 4 says, Now the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. How many know that is rampant in our age? Seducing spirits, seducing spirits, lying, fake spiritual news, fake spiritual news, fake spiritual news. In fact, you can even, if you even go to certain psychiatrists, they'll ask you if you go to church, if you tell them yes, they'll say, well, that's your problem. You need to stop that. They're so anti-God. That, that's, that's their answer to you. Don't get your counsel from the ungodly. Can I get a witness? Don't get your counsel from the ungodly. That's not, what wrong, that's not what's wrong with you. Having a sense of right and wrong and still having a conscience that hasn't been seared is not your problem. It's your hope. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. Having their conscience seared with a hot iron. What happens when your conscience no longer works? It's been burned beyond repair. You no longer feel the burning conviction of sin because you've played with right and wrong so long it no longer registers. Your ability to reason when it comes to right and wrong has been destroyed. Started working construction when I was 12 years old. I know what it is to work with my hands. I know what it is to have calluses on your hands. And guess what? I also know what it is to have blisters on your hands. I prefer calluses. Blisters hurt. But guess what? You don't want your soul to become calloused. Because you can literally, you can literally, if you get enough callus on, on, on a part of your hand, you can literally take a match and you can touch it that callus and you don't even feel anything for a while. We don't want to reach the place where our conscience no longer works. I've heard the statements of people, well, you know, the first time I did it, I felt really bad. The second time, it wasn't so bad. The third time, it was easier. The fourth time, it wasn't as bad. Now I don't even think about it anymore. What's happening? It's not that they're progressing in maturity. It's that they're shutting off the voice of reason that God gave you to try to keep you from destroying yourself. Wow. 
Listen, I know none of us like pain. I mean, look, if you're in your right mind, you don't like pain. But guess what? Pain really is a gift. Pain really is a Pain lets me know, hey, something needs help. Something needs a rest. Something needs to be taken care of. Some, are, are you hearing me? And God's trying to send a spiritual message to us when our soul is in pain. It's not time to lay out a church. It's not time to run. It's time to run to the cross. It's time to run to the rock. It's time to run to the one who alone can heal. It's time to run to the balm of Gilead. It's time to run to Him who alone can succor you. It's an old English word, but it means comfort you. Swaddle you like a mama swaddles a baby. Look, I don't know about you, but sometimes life can just hurt. And you just need Daddy God to just hold you. You you just need Daddy God to hold you till the wind stops blowing. Till the storm stops raging. Till I can get my sea legs again, if you please. Till I can live to fight another day, so to speak. Running's not the answer. Running is not the answer. Wow. He that being often reproved hardens his neck shall suddenly be destroyed in that without remedy. Proverbs 29 1. Second Chronicles 36. It sounds like you could read this from tomorrow's paper if they wanted to tell the truth. More of all, the chief of the priests and the people transgressed very much after all the abominations of the heathen and polluted the house of the Lord, which he had hallowed in Jerusalem. Now the Lord God of their fathers sent to them by his messengers, rising up be times or many times and sending because he had compassion on his people and on his dwelling place. But they mocked the messengers of God and despised his words and misused his prophets until the wrath of the Lord arose against his people till there was no remedy. What does it mean when there's no remedy left? The word remedy is something that corrects or counteracts an evil or compensates for a loss. Let me say it again. Remedy is something that corrects or counteracts an evil or compensates for a loss. What is the remedy for this sin-sick age we're in? You know and I know His name is Jesus. What is the remedy for the addicted? What is the remedy for the abused? What is the remedy for the heart sick? Listen, I'm not denying you have a problem. I'm not ignoring your circumstance. I'm simply telling you the more you wallow in it, the worse it gets. It's not going to get better. Just wallowing in it. And here's the thing. There's got to be some stick to You can't just come one Sunday. Well, that didn't work. Let me move on. Well, you tried drugs more than one Sunday. You drank more than one Sunday. You sinned more than one Sunday. You rebelled against God more than one Sunday. You ran from the truth more than one Sunday. I wish somebody would hear what I'm telling you today. Somebody say, preach, preacher. You didn't get in this mess overnight. And you want to come and just give God a half an hour one Sunday and go back to the mess you were in. It doesn't work that way. And until you're honest enough to admit that, you're just playing games. I guess that's why I keep keep going back to this because it just, you know, there's some truths that are just so powerful. No matter where you, it's almost like all roads lead back And I keep reminding myself again and again that you can't help anybody until they're done. You can't help anybody until they're done. The prodigal son could not be helped until he was done with that type of lifestyle. He had to come to the conclusion, the pigs stink, the food is awful, these people are not my friends. Nobody else could make those conclusions. Nobody else could tell him that. He wasn't listening to anybody else. He left 
proudly. He left home, as one preacher said, saying, Daddy, oh. But he came home saying, oh, Daddy. Let me tell you something. Reality can kind of do that for you. He left high, flying high, plenty of friends, plenty of dope, plenty of party, plenty of this, and he was broken beyond repair. And there's only one that can fix you when you're broken beyond repair, and his name is Jesus. He can pick up the pieces and cause you to live again. He can speak life into death and cause you to live again. He's the resurrection and the life, not just two weeks from now, but every day, 365 days a year. He is, and because he is, you and I can be. Oh, hallelujah. My Lord, I feel that. Whew. Hallelujah. I'm going to say it again, not because I forgot I said it, but because too many people are forgetting I said it. Forty-two years of preaching this month. Forty-two years ago this month I was saved. I have yet, I have yet to meet the person who tells me they can't make it spiritually. Answer these three simple questions in the affirmative. Oh, well, they can answer them, but they can't ask, answer them in the affirmative. When they try to tell me it doesn't work, when they try to tell me I can't do it, when they try to tell me that it, it's just not working, there's something that's just not, maybe this is just not the place for me, I ask them three questions. And by the way, these, these answers can be given in any state. These answers transfer boundaries, space, and time. And here it is. Do you read your Bible every day? Do you pray every day? And do you faithfully attend the house of God? And by faithfully attend, I don't mean once or twice a month. I mean you're here, if at all possible, every time the door's open. I'm going to tell you something. I've yet to meet anybody that can answer all three of those questions in the affirmative. Every, every, every last one of them to a person will drop their head and begin to mumble Every last one of them will drop their head and begin to talk out of the side of their mouth. Or every last one, or they'll look down and start shuffling their feet. Well, I, I try to. Or It's not about trying. I didn't try to eat breakfast this morning. I did. Oh, come on. Somebody ought to say, preach, preacher. I didn't try to eat breakfast this morning. I ate it. I had two eggs sunny side up and two pieces of turkey bacon with a piece of toast. I washed it down with a small glass of V8 juice and a half a cup of coffee. I didn't try. I did it. I got to stop trying to eat spiritually. I'm going to say that again. I thank y'all for those couple shout outs, but I'm going to just camp here until I hear some more. I, 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 I'm not going, i got to quit trying to eat spiritually. Well, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. There's certain things that have to be to sustain life. Now, I'm not telling you I would have died without breakfast this morning. But I do need it sometime to sustain life. And since my wife loves me and, 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 and fixed it for me and did it with a smile and, and, and did such a wonderful job, I chose to do it. And what I'm trying to tell you, the Word says, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. You don't try to taste, you just do. You just do. But I don't taste he's good in the bar. Uh oh. I don't taste he's good smoking weed. I don't taste he's good popping pills. I don't taste he's good hanging out in some evil environment. 
where His presence is a million miles away. I have to taste of His goodness where He has ordained a place of blessing for me. He said, there will I place my blessing. I read that in Scripture. It just stirs me up. God's always looking for a person to go to a place to fulfill a purpose. And when God says, and there will I place my blessing. Can I, can I just let you in on a little secret? I, I love you, and I hope, I, I, I'm not even going to say I hope. Nobody's going to get offended because you're under moratorium. But I'm going to tell you something. You, you, just, you just can't get blessed anywhere you want to get blessed. If God has ordained you're supposed to be blessed here, there has He placed the blessing. And whether you like me or not, buddy, you better come in here and suit up and boot up and say, bring it on because I can't afford to not taste and see that God is good. I believe everybody's got a place God wants you to be planted. That's what I mean. I'm not saying you can't taste His presence at home. I surely hope you can. But there is something about corporate worship there's something, I'm going to tell you something, when we started, I mean, yeah, it started a little tight, but guess what? That's because there's a battle. Do you understand that? We are in warfare. You've got to press through. That doesn't mean quit. It means, devil, you're not going to stand in my way of getting to the throne. We have to kick some stuff out the way to get to the throne this morning, Ben, but we got there. His presence came down. We worshiped our way into His presence. You can't just let all this mess of the devil run in interference between you and the throne and oh well, that's just that's too hard today. I'll come back another. No. Devil, you're not going to set the agenda whether I worship today or not. You're not going to set the agenda today whether I declare he's worthy. You're not going to do it. You're not going to do it. Some of us need to be anointed with some Holy Ghost stubbornness. I don't mean that other stubborn mess you've been doing all your life. I'm talking about some Holy Ghost stubbornness. In fact, it'd do some of you good to get on your knees and say, God, take some of this ornery stubbornness I have and flip it. Flip it to the spirit side. Come on, somebody say it with me. Flip it to the spirit side. Come on, why don't you be honest? Say, I know it's in there. Just flip it to the spirit side. If some of you got just a quarter of a stubborn streak for Jesus that you get sometimes on the other side. Don't y'all shout me down when I'm preaching good. Somebody say, on the other side. On the other side. On the other side. Hello. You know, we, 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 you know, we can just beat this family tree to death. You know, on, on the other side is all the problems. The reason my children is this is on the other side. The, the, the reason... <laughs> the reason... <laughs> it's all on the other side of that tree. No, I'm going to pop your bubble today. The roots come up and branch out both ways. You've both got to stand up and take ownership. It's on both sides of the tree, honey. And the only way we're going to get healed of it is to go to the root of Jesse, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the one who made us can fix us, the one who touched us can heal us. Hallelujah. Oh! Man and woman took their poodle dog to the vet. Vet looked the poodle dog over and said he's got gallbladder of trouble. Woman turned to her husband and said, it has to be on your side. None of my family's had gallbladder issues. <laughs> I wish some people would get a sense of humor. Jesus, touch them today. Help them. Help them, Lord. Must be on your side. We have no gallbladder trouble at all. When it gets broken beyond repair, we need a miracle of God's grace. I got some good news to you because the Bible does say where sin abounds, grace did much more abound. It's not that God's run out of grace even for this messed up, mixed up, broken generation. It's that we've got to come into His presence 
and have it appropriated into our lives. Years and years ago, a revival broke out in a little rural community. And the services began to run rather late. And there was an unsaved man in the community that was known for being kind of mean and kind of ornery. And uh, he didn't like it that his wife was spending so much time in church. And so he made some rather snide remarks to the pastor and said, what are you doing with my wife down there the church that many hours he's just making a snide kind of cutting remark church going on till 10 11 o'clock and they were standing out in the field and the preacher said look in that barrel and uh man looked at him kind of funny and he leaned over and it was a 55 gallon barrel drum and had the top in and had a little hole he said look look in the barrel he leaned over he said i don't see anything he said that's just it your head's in the way a couple weeks spent by the revival began to strengthen conviction began to eat on that old boy and Curiosity got the best of him. He came to church. He heard the gospel. The Spirit of God began to move. He made his way to the altar. And he bowed and he kneeled in prayer. He prayed for about 15, 20 minutes, pouring out his heart to God the best way he knew how. He, 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 wasn't, he wasn't a church man. And all of a sudden, he jumped to his feet and he said, Glory to God, I'm inside the barrel looking out. Because the pastor told him, said, your head's in the way. He said, but if you could get inside that barrel and look out through that hole, you'd see a whole universe. So he shouted, Glory to God, I'm inside the barrel looking out. You know, that's why so many people will reject the gospel because their head's in the way. They'll think through everything else in their life. They'll reason this and reason that and reason the other. And they'll think somehow we just get enough education. We can educate the devil out of folks. Or if we can just find that gene, that, that just that one flaw in the genetic makeup, that just genetic propensity towards this certain things, and we can breed a super race that will no longer be subject to these types of behaviors. It may work in cats and dogs and other animals to a degree of breeding out this characteristic or that trait or this size or the other, but there is no such thing as breeding away sin. We were all born in sin and shaped in iniquity, and it's not your genes that's the problem. It's sin. All we like sheep have gone astray. We've turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord hath laid on him, meaning Jesus, the iniquity of us all. So what are you going to do? So it's time to seek the Lord. It's time to cry out to Him who alone can save. We must have a revival of reason before this generation is lost completely. So it's time. Sow to yourselves in righteousness. Reap in mercy. Break up your fallow ground for it is time. Everybody say it is time to seek the Lord till He come and rain righteousness upon you. It's time. It's time. That's why this Friday night we're going to meet again. We're going to knock on heaven's door. We're going to call on the only one who does have the answer. We're going to believe that there's going to be a continued shifting in the heavenlies. And we will have breakthrough. We will have victory. We will have peace. We will have rest. We will have resolution. Because we will come to the one who said, Come all ye that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in spirit. Listen, Jesus will never put more on you than you can bear. That's the devil. That's the devil doing that stuff. 
Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thine heritage to reproach, that the heathen should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? I know I'm jumping verses, but I did it for a reason. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly. Rend your heart and not your garments. Turn unto the Lord your God, for He is gracious and merciful. Slow to anger and of great kindness and repents Him of the evil. Who knows if He will return and repent and leave a blessing behind Him, even a meat offering and a drink offering unto the Lord your God. Because if we've ever needed Him, it's now. It's now. So we've got a theme this coming Friday. We're going to, they're all with R. I don't have them right in front of me, but it's going to be repent, renew, restore, revive, remove, refresh, and rest. So I want you to think on those lines. You can look up some scripture on those lines. It's not a time to come preach. We're not going to preach. If you want to read a verse or two then to explain your direction of prayer, that's fine. But we're going to pray. We're going to pray. We're going to focus on prayer. We're going to talk to the one who alone. Listen, that's the problem. You've been talking to too many people that can't fix it. Why don't you spend half that time talking to the one who can? Let me say that again. You've been talking to too many people that can't fix it. Why don't you spend half that time talking to the one who can? He alone is able. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave them there. Man can't fix it. Man can't fix it. You know, the most frustrating thing there is in life is to try to get somebody to do something for you that they have no ability to do. And you both walk away frustrated. You both walk away realizing, I asked the wrong person to do the wrong thing. There's only one with the qualifications that can fix this messed up world. Let me say it again. His name is Jesus. Bow your hearts with me. Father, I thank you today. I thank you today for your word. It is forever settled in heaven. It is a light to our pathway, a lamp to our feet. Lord, in times just like these, we need and have a Savior. And it's time, Lord, as never before, it's time. It's time. Quickly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. But I wonder how many without hesitation. This is not about embarrassing yourself or embarrassing anyone else. It's just a straight up truth. How many say, Pastor, I have loved ones. I have people. I have, I have, I have acquaintances. I have people in my circle of influence that are having difficulty with reason. And I need God to help them. I see hands going up all over this building. All over this building. I have Almost 100% of people, whether you're trying to explain a situation to someone at work or you're trying to explain a situation to a family member, the breakdown of reason is making communication inestimably diff difficult. Stand with me all over this building. I want you to meet me here because every last one of you just about raised your hand. We're going to pray. We're going to believe God today. We're going to believe God for a miracle of divine intervention. A miracle of a restoration of reason. Jesus. 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 Can I just, while you're still coming down, I want to just say this to you, okay? I know a lot of you in here may be past the, like the child rearing or training age, but many of you aren't. And many of you that are get to do it all over with your grandkids. Shout yes. And here's what I want, here's, here's what I want you to, here's what I want you to hope you don't forget. I want you to just grab this and hold on to it. Don't just tell your kid, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, don't do it, don't, 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 and, and give them all this big list of rules and expect them to remember it. But all through the day, anytime, anywhere, any place, when something happens that's a teaching moment, take that moment, speak to them in the moment, 
while they understand what just happened or what's going on and explain to them, this is how we handle this because of this, 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 and this. Then you will walk away with a child enlightened and neither one of you will be frustrated. But if you just try to give them a whole banquet load of stuff and none of it's applying and none of it's connecting because it's not going on right now, they're going to miss it all because that's not the way you learn. That's not the way you learn. Whew. Oh, Jesus. Come on, lift your hands. Let's pray for everyone right now that you lifted your hands for, that you said, I know somebody. Right now, Lord, I pray for a revival of reason to break forth in our family. Lord, I pray for those for whatever the reason, Lord, have impaired their cognitive abilities, have impaired their, their judgment skills. Lord, that you would have mercy to turn back the time. Turn back the clock. Father, I pray for those who have abused their mind through different types of drugs, that God, you would somehow, in your great mercy, give them a healing. Give them a healing touch. I pray, Lord, that you would give us all both the wisdom, the courage, and the right words that, Lord, we can warn them and plead with them in love before they totally destroy themselves. Lord, your word declared, save yourselves from this untoward generation. God, we're living in a generation that has lost its moral compass. God, help us. Help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. Lord, I pray for consciences that have been seared, for those scales to drop off and for them to be given one more chance. Lord, I pray that they'll awake to righteousness and sin not. That there'll be a revival of the fear of God. There'll be a revival of the truth that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Lord, I pray we would go forth from this place today and you would give us those opportunities and you would anoint us with wisdom beyond our own ability that we'll be able to speak the words that would cause reason to happen within their heart and life. Now, Lord, I pray your blessing over this congregation. I pray that you would keep your hand of blessing upon them and they would go forth from this place and be salt and light. Bless them and keep them, I pray. Lord, in Jesus' name, any spell, incantation, work of darkness that has been spoken against anyone, in particular this church in general, I reverse it in Jesus' name. I pray it back on the head of those who send it sevenfold that they may know and understand there's a greater power. Thank you, Lord, that what you've blessed cannot be cursed. We stand here today blessed of God because of Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. Can we just thank Him before we go? Thank you for the blood, Lord. Thank you for Calvary. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for sanity. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. God bless you. Hope to see you tonight. We're going to have a great time in the presence of God. Thank the Lord for His goodness. Amen? Hallelujah. Shake some hands, hug some necks. God bless you.